Welcome back to another BizBite episode of the E-Commerce Badassery podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Totillo Coster. Unsurprisingly, today's episode is inspired by questions and conversations I've been having with clients. What is interesting, though, is the fact that this particular situation came up multiple times for multiple different people in a short span of time. And I know I don't talk all that much about brick and mortar retail, but I spent a lot of years working in owning and marketing brick and mortar retail stores. So if you do ever have questions on how to approach something, don't hesitate to reach out. So let's chat about how to balance your social media presence between promoting your online versus your brick and mortar store. And more specifically, we're going to be talking about Instagram. Now, this won't necessarily be the right move for everyone. It really depends on your business, your goals, and where you're at right now. But this strategy I'm going to walk you through is based on business owners who have an in-person presence, but their current goal is to grow the e-commerce division of their business. The first one is an esthetician who has one local spa location and then sells skincare products and makeup online. Her spa is her bread and butter, and the majority of her followers are local people. But truth be told, her spa is typically booked out. So while we want to make sure we're communicating spa-related things, we're really shifting to focus on that e-commerce growth. So here's how we're going to divvy up the social content. The feed is going to be focused mostly on awareness content to grow her audience and, of course, the products she sells on her website. Booking in spa services is going to be a secondary message when it makes sense. For example, in May, we have a big focus on pedicures. Sandal season is around the corner. And featuring her spring nail polish collection, which was just released. Our feed posts are going to be all about the importance of pedicures beyond just looking pretty and how to take care of your feet at home between professional services. So in those posts, we'll be featuring an at-home petty kit that she sells on her website, which we'll also be able to tag in the post. At the end, we're going to have a secondary call to action inside the caption that says local to city where she's located, and then invite them to book an appointment. Then in her stories, which are only seen by followers and not really good for visibility, is where we'll spend more time talking about the spa and inviting them to book appointments, attend events, etc. Anytime we feature a certain product, our call to action will always stay available online and in store. Now, as we know, segmenting your audience on Instagram isn't exactly easy to do, but once the feature is available to her, we'll create a broadcast channel specifically for in spa content. And to make sure it's still obvious that she does have a physical location to anyone who may come to her profile, we'll use the pinned post feature to show what's happening in the spa. We'll switch them out monthly and then archive them when the new one is released. The other client is a coffee business. The majority of her business is local and wholesale, but she too wants to focus on growing the e-commerce side. She's in the process of moving to a larger production location, which also means she'll have more space to do in-person tastings and some other fun things in her local community. When she initially reached out, her first question was, should I start a separate Instagram? My answer was immediately no. Initially, she was concerned that her non-local followers wouldn't care about her journey building out and opening this new location or seeing information about events and tastings they couldn't be a part of. First off, people love behind the scenes, especially for small businesses. Humans are naturally curious, voyeuristic, and we love to cheer on our favorite small biz CEOs. Secondly, Those tasting events, if you've got people enjoying the coffee and giving feedback, that becomes really great social proof and conversion content for your social channels. Plus, what product-based business owner wants to worry about running two Instagram accounts? Ultimately, when it comes to social, I would typically lean more toward the e-commerce side of things. As long as local people know you exist, they'll come in person if that's what they want to do. Otherwise, don't alienate the location-independent reach that you can get on the internet. 
The places that I would lean more heavily into in-person promotion would be Google My Business, paid ads, and email marketing. Again, if you have more questions about marketing a brick and mortar store or you want me to cover it a bit more on the podcast, please do let me know. And that's a wrap on today's BizBite episode. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today and I'll see you on the flip side.